Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. If you or anyone you know has a small business where your data needs really aren't being met by, you know, carrying around thumb drives in your pocket, then it's time to have a look at the WD Sentinel. It's easy to use and keeps your data safe. The Sentinel can back up up to 25 computers running a variety of different operating systems, including Windows, Mac, as well as Linux. In terms of hardware, it's actually pretty impressive considering the value of the package that you're getting. So it has a dual core Intel D525 1.8 gigahertz processor, two gigs of RAM, and it also uses server class hardware to support that infrastructure of CPU and RAM. So WD has not skimped in any way on the motherboard components, for example, or anything else about this unit. It even has other enterprise grade hardware such as redundant power supplies. It has two power inputs that use a failover system so that if you plug in two completely separate external power supplies, even if one of them dies outright, you will experience no downtime. It also has dual gigabit network ports, which means even if a network cable fails or a port fails either on the switch or on the Sentinel itself, you will again experience no downtime, which is outstanding. On the back as well, it has USB 3 ports, which two of them, which can be used for a variety of different functions. The cool thing about it is because it's running a Windows operating system, you can do almost anything with them, whether it's adding additional storage or using it as a print server or whatever else the case may be. On the front of the unit, we find some of the other, oh yeah, there's a cooling fan on the back, if you guys didn't see that on the close-ups already. On the front of the unit, there's a few things. So there is an LCD readout that gives you some cool information such as, you know, software updates being available, the IP of the unit, which is handy, given that this product is designed for not necessarily the most tech-savvy guys in the world, although tech-savvy people are welcome to use it, of course. Hard drive activity indicators, a power switch, as well as the four bays in the front that are for swapping in and out your drives. And putting a drive in the Sentinel is as easy as popping open the front, sliding a bare drive in, no tools, no screws, no drive sliders, nothing like that, and then closing it like this. The Sentinel also automatically configures your drives in the safest possible way. So this is a four terabyte version, which means it comes with two, two terabyte drives. It is automatically configured in RAID 1. There is no option to use anything that is not a protected data RAID level. So as soon as we take another drive, we've actually added a third drive now and put it in, it upgrades itself automatically to RAID 5 and it does it online, which means we can still access the data in the server even while it is migrating RAID levels and adding additional storage. So we'll now have four terabytes of total storage with one parity drive in RAID 5. It should be noted, however, that you do have to use a WD validated RE enterprise class drive with this product. WD is not going to ship you this small office storage server and then risk people putting subpar components in them and not configuring them correctly and then losing their data. It's WD's name on the line when it comes to this device keeping your data safe. So those RE drives have over 1 million hours mean time between failure, which means they pretty much won't die. But if they do, then you're using a safe data storage method such as RAID 1 or RAID 5 to ensure that you don't lose anything even in the event of an outright drive failure. So in summary, you can lose a drive, you can lose a network connection, and you can even lose a power connection without losing any of your data and experiencing any downtime for your business. Now the biggest values to an SMB I believe are twofold. Number one is that WD is using only technology leader stuff in here. WD drives, Intel processor, Intel chipset, Microsoft software. There's pretty much nothing to not like about it. Number two is the ease of use, which they've built into every aspect of it. They're not assuming any technical expertise. Not every business of 10 or 15 people has a dedicated IT guy. And while an IT guy might find this product to be a, a little bit restrictive in terms of what you can do, you know? Well, what, you mean I can't even manually select my RAID level? It's meant to save the user from themselves when they're not that experienced. And that is how WD can stand behind something like this and know that it's impossible to screw it up. And that's the key feature. FEMA estimates that anywhere between 40 to 60% of small businesses do not reopen their doors after 
a catastrophic data loss. I can't emphasize that enough. If you are, say for example, you're a dentist office or you're um, a law firm and you lose your data, you lose your records from a hard drive crash, then what? With the Sentinel, you know that not only is it safe in terms of your peace of mind, but you're also compliant with various regulations that require safekeeping of data on a secured enough server for X amount of period of time. And there's lots of different rules for that depending on the industry that you're in, whether you're a bank or a lawyer or whatever else the case may be. Setting up the Sentinel is so easy my grandma could do it. You basically plug the LAN port into the cable and plug it into your switch. You plug in the power and then you just look at the readout on the front of the Sentinel. In the quick start guide it tells you, you just go to the IP address slash connect. You go through the simple setup wizard where it asks you to put in a username and password. And once you're done you can open the dashboard to administer your server. Signing into the dashboard is as simple as entering the administrator password of your choosing. You can load in a password hint. However, it should be noted that all network users will have access to the password hint. So don't use anything too obvious. Now that we're in the software dashboard, you can see that there's a variety of different common tasks that we can go ahead and complete. And what you'll notice about it is it's very Windowsy feeling, which is in line with the theme that Western Digital has of making this easy to use for people who aren't super tech savvy. If you know Windows at all, you're probably gonna be able to navigate this just fine. So some of the getting started tasks include getting updates, uh, setting up the remote web access to your dashboard so you can log into the dashboard and change things like access permissions or whatever else. No matter where you are, you can monitor the status of your server as well. You can set up options for sharing. Configure media settings. Remember, it's a DLNA server, so if you have like a dentist's office, you can save yourself that monthly subscription to, you know, those music services that play elevator music in your office. And you can instead just throw a bunch of songs you like on your Sentinel, stream those to DLNA compatible players, and off you go. Uh, you can learn about centralized storage and you can set up alert email notifications. That's really important. If anything goes wrong, you want to make sure you're getting an alert to your email or your smartphone, which where you can check your email. Common tasks include things like adding a shared folder and customizing this list. So you can take whatever other things you really want to do all the time and put them under here for easy access. There's also in within the home tab, WD Guardian Services, which allows you to buy additional plans for extended warranty for the unit, as well as for extended support. So it comes with 30 day technical support from the time of your first call and a three year warranty. And you can get all kinds of different technical support and warranty plans up to a five year warranty just by purchasing one of the extra plans. Moving on to about it. So there's all the information about your Sentinel itself and you can register the Sentinel in order to get firmware updates, newsletters, and all kinds of great stuff like that. Moving along in the software configuration dashboard, there's lots of different stuff we can do. So within the user configuration, we can set up all the different users, set up their access, what they can see, what they can't see. So this slick cameraman user has access, for example, to in shared folders only the videos folder so he has full read and write access to those folders and pretty much nothing else he doesn't need remote web access to anything but shared folders he doesn't need to be able to you know log into the computers remotely or see the server dashboard nothing like that because he's just the you know guy who operates the camera thing and edits so that's pretty much all he needs all right, moving right along to computers and backups, so you can add a whole whack load of different computers, but this one right here is uh, the Linus PC, the one that we do have connected. Remember, these are incremental image-based backups, so you can actually browse existing backups, and you can customize what you do or don't want them to back up. So if you have two drives in a system, for example, you can go, okay, I only want my, I don't want my OS backed up. I only want my data drive backed up. You can make a change like that. Items to back up, items not to back up. You save your changes and bam, you're done. It should be borne in mind, guys, that we are configuring this right now while it is in the middle of migrating RAID arrays. So the snappiness that you're seeing here, it'll be even better when the CPU is not being pegged with that data migration. Server folders, this shows you all the different folders you have on your server as well as giving you an idea in the hard drives tab of how much space you have left on your server and how much you've used already. If you keep an eye on that, you'll know whether it's time to throw in an additional drive or maybe start increasing the capacity of your drives in the future. Here you can manage your add-ins. It comes with the keep fault 
online backup add-in, although you will have to pay for a subscription to keep Vault. What that means is you will not only have the security and safety of having your data backed up here securely, but also online. You do have to pay additional for it, but in terms of you know fireproofing, there's not much you can do with a NAS. So you can protect yourself from, from hardware failure, but not from a complete disaster unless you're using an online backup service. Speaking of which, we go into the Keep Vault Online Backup, and there's not much we can do here right now because we haven't bought any storage on Keep Vault, but you can customize it to a great extent by saying, okay, what's the most important things we need to back up? If you have a folder called, you know, client, uh, you know, data records, and that's the most important thing, you can buy just a little bit of data on Keep Vault and use it to update, uh, use it to protect that and not necessarily, you know, pay extra to have your video library protected, which you don't care about necessarily. And finally, we're in the monitor, which shows us all the information we need to know about our server. So your Ethernet ports and whether they're in use, whether they're connected or disconnected, your drive bays, what's going on, your, aha, your data volume. So we're 2.84% finished migrating from RAID 1 to RAID 5, adding a third drive instead of just our two drives. You can see your CPU temperatures, your cooling fan, make sure it's running, and monitor your power supplies. Remember, there's two redundant power supplies to make sure those are still working as well. One of the final things you'll want to set up is your server settings. So in here you can configure things like automatic updates. This can be accessed through the server settings button right here. Uh, you can set up the media server or turn it off. You can set your video streaming quality as well as configuring your media library. You can configure it with home groups. So if you are using this in a scenario where home group would be relevant, which is Windows 7 machines only, then you can create and uh, manage your home group settings from within here. You can also turn on remote web access, which is if you have a UPnP compatible router as simple as turning it on and then I believe you have to set up which, uh, which URL you want to use in order to access it. See, it's automatically configuring the router and the firewall and all that stuff right now. You can also set up your domain. So with three clicks, if you're already using Active Directory, you can configure all of your user account permissions and all of that and integrate this with your Active Directory. Windows you know, is Windows, so it integrates reasonably well. Some Linux builds do claim to support that feature, but it can be a little bit buggy. So let's finish up with the value proposition of the Sentinel right now. It sounds expensive. It's a four terabyte total, like raw storage drive NAS for over $800, but let's break it down a little bit. These are RE drives. At the time of filming, two terabyte RE drives are around 270 bucks each, which means you're already over $500 just for the drives alone. Okay, let's assume that Windows Storage Server 2008 only costs as much as Windows Home Server. So that's another hundred plus dollars right there. We're already up to around $700 just for software and the drives which leaves us with only about $100 to $150 for the NAS itself, which is a very good price for a four bay NAS with a dual core Intel processor, as well as two gigs of RAM. So not to forget all of the other stuff as well. So for example, if you wanna run nightly backups of all the PCs in your office and you'll need a Cronus licenses for all of them, now you don't. This is server-based backup, so it will pull the PCs, it will pull data from them as opposed to relying on them to push data to a server and relying on individual software licenses. So there's a whole lot of savings to be had with a Sentinel and I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode of NCIX Tech Tips. Don't forget to subscribe.